Hi and welcome back to my channel and in this video it's an exciting one today we're going to be looking at how having a CIC can help you get a mortgage. That's right so I'm going to be talking about some of the financial advantages of having a CIC and how you can if you've got nothing can fast track to getting yourself a mortgage for your personal home. So before I get into that please subscribe to this channel for more on my CIC tips and grant funding tips. So we all know all the difficulties around getting a mortgage if you're a first time buyer or you're someone who's in a property and you want to get a bigger property. So of course at the moment things are particularly hard with lower wages and higher house prices and then we've got also higher interest rates as well which are bumping mortgages up. So there's lots of difficulties there and if you are in a employed job like if you're in sort of a standard profession like a teacher, social worker, probation officer all those kinds of professions is particularly hard especially if you're a solo person um, because if you're single of course it's even more difficult if you've got two incomes coming in of course it's easier to get a mortgage so let me show you how you can fast track yourself with your CIC um, and really quickly get a mortgage I did this myself it's totally legal um, it's absolutely fine legit and above board but you do have to do things carefully and, and be aware of something so I'm going to cover that in this video so what are the two things you need to get a mortgage one is you need a good income because they will times it by 3.5 and then that's roughly the amount they'll lend you so you need a good income to begin with and two of course you need a deposit um, of course, aside from that, of course, you need a good credit rating and all those other things. But I'm assuming you've got that. So we're just going to try to work on uh, getting your income up and uh, also getting your deposit up. So with a CIC, of course, you are a director. You are not paid as a director. However, when you do work, uh, project work that you get grant funding for, as I've talked about in my other videos on this course, you are essentially inventing your own job. You are a project manager. Um, so you're inventing your own job, a project manager wage, as I've said often on this channel, is about £349 a day. Um, so that roughly, if you were, say, to get a couple of arts councils and you were to get a lottery uh, and a children in need or a few other little pots of funding, you could quite easily get yourself as a project manager up to the personal income of around £60,000-£70,000 for the year. Now, of course, that completely depends on what you're doing. If you're not running art projects, then you need to get different types of funding. So there's a few variables there. And again, I cover that in different videos. But so we're assuming that you're going to be able to get yourself in your CIC up to that sort of standard rate of around 60, 70,000 pounds personal income to do work for your CIC. Right. So the next thing is, of course, as I've discussed on the other channels, how do you get the money that you earn as a project manager to you? So as I've already said, there's the option of being self-employed or there's the option of having an LTD and you pay yourself into your LTD. Now, for this example of getting a mortgage, I would recommend you steer away from the self-employed payment model uh, because, as we know, if you're self-employed, it's a lot dif more difficult to get a mortgage. So, whereas if you've got uh, an LTD and you employ yourself through your LTD on PAYE, um, of course, then it's a different situation. Um, so, you, you are then employed. Um, so, on, even if you're a sole trader, you are employed uh, you could either be employed on PAYE through your CIC or you could be employed through PAYE through your LTD. All right. So um, so when you get to the level of employed, then it's a question of what you're going to pay yourself. OK, so what a mortgage lender will look for is um, three pay slips. So they'll want your employer to provide a letter to say this person is on this is a permanent contract, um, is earning this amount of money. We don't expect it to change. Um, and then you're going to prove that with three pay slips, right? So, um, so essentially, you're going to say that um, the, you're going to have a letter which is going to detail that you earn around seventy thousand a year. Now, once you've got a few of those um, uh, funding pots in, um, you could pay yourself those first three months um, at the income that you're saying you earn. So say it's seventy thousand. So you're going to pay yourself three months through PAYE and generate three pay slips which prove that you are on around £70,000. Now, of course, uh, be, you know, because funding is up and down, of course, there is no guarantee that you know, you're always going to be on that income. There are going to be months later on in your CIC where you may get, um, pay, pay yourself less through PAYE or more. 
um, and that's going to fluctuate but all they need to know is that you've got those three pay slips which show that you're on 70,000 so you work out obviously 70,000 obviously then divided by 12 so that's going to be your monthly wage so that's how you get your uh, how it looks like then you are earning as an employed person 70,000 60,000 or 70,000 pounds now I've done the calculations so say you are earning around uh, 60 or 70,000 pounds and say you have got a deposit of 30,000. Now you might say, oh, but I don't have a deposit. But if you let those um, first few uh, paychecks come in um, and you actually just squirrel that away and keep it as savings, so assumingly then you've got maybe another day job or something else that you're doing, which obviously you use for your own income, so um, so then you squirrel and save all of the money that's coming over through PAYE, that's come over from the work you've done for your CIC, you save it all. Um, and then what you do then is you use that for your deposit. So it'll take a little while, of course, maybe a few months to, um, to get up to around 30,000. But remember, you can pay yourself in uh, up front for some of the work that you do. So say you wanna get that 30,000 quicker than just kind of squirreling it away every month. Say you've got, say, an arts council and a lottery uh, grant, say you've got around 40,000 already there. What you could do is um, do as much work of the project as you can early on in the project, so you pay yourself as much of that 40,000 as possible um, in the early months. Um, so for instance, say you're running an arts project for 12 months and it involves doing loads of research and some workshops and some events, you know, schedule it early on in the, in the actual um, project. Um, so plan that early on so then you can pay, because you always got to pay yourself after you've done the work. So you pay yourself as early as possible the bulk of the money. Um, so again, that'll make your pay slips look good because it will look like you're earning lots of money uh, because in those first three months, you'd have paid yourself the bulk of your funding. Um, so that's how you can squirrel and save um, as, as much as you can for your deposit. So once you've got say 30,000 deposit and you can prove through your pay slips that you, you're earning around 70,000, then I've worked out um, looking at the NatWest mortgage calculator that you can get a mortgage of around 300,000. So 300,000 pound mortgage with 30,000 pound deposit, deposit um, and you've proved your pay slips, you've got your pay slips, you've got your letter, you've got everything to go. Now, of course, you will need to afford your mortgage payments, so that's another matter. Um, so uh, you're gonna have to think about how you're gonna be able to afford that. Um, so that's for you to assess and work out and budget for. But I'm just giving you an example of how you can use your CIC to uh, generate your deposit as quickly as possible and employ yourself uh, either through your CIC or your LTD um, to employ yourself so you can prove over like a three month pay slip period um, that you're earning that kind of wage that you need to be able to get your mortgage. So I totally appreciate that it's different around the country. I live in Cornwall. The average house price around here is only 280. Uh, of course, if you're in London, it's a different story. But then some of you will also have partners and maybe you'll have maybe some equity in your mortgage and everyone's starting at different levels and going for different size properties. But I just wanted to clarify in this video how uh, you can uh, maximise your chances of getting a mortgage. Now, the last thing I will mention is what happens if you, you your CIC, you dissolve your CIC at some point, you close your CIC, um, for some reason you don't want it anymore, so you close that down. Um, so what happens then, um, because people say, oh, does it affect my home? Um, absolutely not. Um, so if you close any LTD or CIC, it's a company, um, you usually have only guaranteed it um, for one pound, so all you would lose is that one pound. Um, they cannot um, go after your personal wealth if you are a director on a company that has dissolved, okay? So there is never any gonna be any threat to your mortgage. Now, it's a different story if you can't pay your mortgage, that's a completely different story, but I'm just saying, because I do get asked quite a lot, is there any risk to your personal home if you have a CIC, and that is no. Now, the last thing I'll mention is who should sign off the letter that you give to your mortgage company if it's just you doing all of this work. So the answer to that is you get one of your staff, um, somebody that you've employed. So when I started Four Elements, I actually did this. So when Four Elements started back in 2012, um, I got my mortgage in 2015. So only a couple of years on, um, and I did exactly this. I actually, um, 
you know, squirreled the, like I said, the funding. Um, and I got my uh, got my mortgage um, by doing that. And one thing I did do, which I should mention, is who signs off your letter. Obviously, you're not going to sign off your letter to say that you're employing you. Um, you're going to get one of your staff to do it or another director. Uh, I actually, at the time, got my apprentice um, to sign it off because they worked, and I said that they were my HR person, which is absolutely fine. So um, anybody that's working for you can sign off that letter, and you can just say that they're your. Um, your HR person. So uh, that is not a problem at all. So that's how you get around who signs off the actual letter that you send to your mortgage advisors. So I hope that was useful. I'm going to do some more of these videos because I love to share with you all these little life hacks. Um, and obviously I really want you guys to succeed. It is a hard world out there, especially at the moment in this total awfulness of this financial crisis. So if I can share with you any little hacks um, that I can, then I will. Um, any questions, obviously get back to me in the comments or over on my website.